here we are again. It's time for another one of these settings guides. This one, of course, for the PlayStation or PSX, whichever you prefer. Before I get started, I do want to remind you to click subscribe and hopefully click that little bell for updates. I really appreciate it. No need to talk too much. You know how this works. I'll take you through the settings for Duck Station. That's the emulator we'll be using. And I'm definitely going to show you how to get it set up running in widescreen mode as well. So let's take a look at those settings. The first thing I want you to do is scroll down here and look at import BIOS. This is actually important. You want to search online for PSX on PSP BIOS. I can't show you where to get it, but this BIOS was actually the last one Sony made designed for running PSX games on PSP, and it seems to have some enhancements or just improvements that make games run a little better. I've already imported it, so that's why I got that error. Now I'll show you my recommended settings that get the best performance and run well with most games. Leave these at default, and you can turn fast boot on or off depending on whether you want to see the BIOS, I keep it on. Save state on exits also up to you, but I have had some issues with Duck Station crashing when it resumes a save state automatically, so you may want to set it off. For GPU renderer, you absolutely want OpenGL. I've never found a game where Vulkan runs better, and in fact, usually it runs much worse. I keep the aspect ratio set at match display, but you may want to change it to match game for 2D games or games you don't want to play in widescreen. Sound sampling and integer scaling turned off, that one because most of these games were not going to be playing in their original resolution anyway. I turn linear scaling on for all the 3D games I'm playing, but turn it off for 2D games. And the rest of this stuff is just turned on for you guys so that you can see how the system is running, but if I were playing for fun, I would turn it all off. Over here in audio, there's really nothing to say. Leave everything at default. The enhancements tab is really where things get interesting. I found almost every game will run well at 2x resolution and most games at 2x MSAA anti-aliasing. I keep true color rendering turned on, which turns off dithering. And I always have interlacing disabled. You're basically doubling the horizontal resolution that way. Here in texture filtering, you can choose bilinear. Anything else is going to slow things down. You could also choose nearest neighbor and many games will actually disable bilinear filtering anyway. All my games are NTSC, so I don't really need this, but if you want to run PAL games, you could try turning it on. And unless I'm playing a 2D game, I always keep widescreen hack turned on. Most games work really well that way, as you'll see. The next two I turn off because they only impact FMV and I've noticed sometimes having them on but using the widescreen hack can cause frame rate jittering. You definitely want PGXP geometry turned on. It does a great job of fixing some polygon issues with PlayStation games and makes them look much better. You can also turn on calling correction and texture correction all the games I'll show you today run well with all of that turned on. This next one, as it tells you, works well with some games and not with others. So if you notice problems, try turning it on or off. And then the last one, of course, is similar. Most games don't work with it, but some might work better. And then just keep the CD-ROM settings at default. The Achievement tab is really a personal preference. If you want to use retro achievements, you can set it up here. There are a few things to look at in advanced. You want to go ahead and load the patch codes in case you want to use codes to cheat in games later. Apply compatibility settings. That will help disable some settings like analog joysticks that might break some games. Keep sustained performance mode on for better performance. And I like to turn on all of these screen sync settings as well. Most times you also want optimal frame pacing on just for better, more consistent performance. Changing the presented frame limit would break some games, so just leave that set at 60. You can use the software renderer for readbacks. I haven't noticed any issues keeping that on, and it could help with some games. I keep these audio settings at default and audio sync turned on, but I don't use audio resampling because I rarely fast forward, so I prefer performance and all these next settings you can just leave at their default. 
use the fastest setting here and usually keep the CPU set at 100%, although there can be some interesting benefits to overclocking, which I'll show you later. Leave these next two on unless you're trying to debug some particular issue in a game. You can see here my setting for memory access. And I turn all these on, whether they're necessary or not, since we're not using the Vulkan renderer, doesn't seem to matter. They don't hurt performance. PGXP vertex cache should be turned on, but leave CPU mode off. All right, that covers everything that might impact performance. Time to jump into some games. First up is Crash Team Racing, a game that definitely pushed the PlayStation hardware. You can run it at 2x resolution and with 2x MSAA turned on, and it seems to run just as well and just as fast as it would have originally. Here you can check those settings just to verify. Everything is turned on, including the PGXP options. You may notice some small issues with polygons disappearing at the very edges of the screen, uh, but I think that's a fair price to pay for otherwise good widescreen gameplay. Honda is one of my favorite side-scrolling shoot-em-ups. Uh, I think it still holds up really well today, so if you like shooters and you haven't played this, give it a try. Honestly, at 2x resolution and with 2x MSAA, I think this game still looks really, really good. And before we move on to the next game, I will just show you here to confirm all of the settings I've selected for Einhunder. You will notice here at the beginning of Gran Turismo 2 that the starting grid doesn't display correctly. I've not tried bug testing that to figure out exactly what's causing it, but I've not noticed anything that would impact gameplay. You will notice, however, that despite performing very well, uh, there is a lot of issue with polygons popping in and out on the edges of the screen uh, just because clearly the developers never planned for it to be played in widescreen. Another thing you might notice is that I'm not very good at Gran Turismo.
and I hope you'll forgive me for not showing you the settings, but I promise it's running at 2x resolution with 2x MSAA turned on. Now, if you want to play a 2D game like, say, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you might want to make some changes to your settings. Luckily, you can set per game defaults in Duck Station by going into the app, holding the game, and choosing Game Properties. For a 2D pixel art game like Symphony of the Night, one thing I want to change is linear scaling. I don't want the details smoothed out. I want it to be crispy. I would also want to turn off the widescreen hack and disable widescreen mode entirely to force it into 4x3. Now let's launch the game. And you will immediately notice some performance issues. I found that in most 2D games, you definitely want to also turn off MSAA or you're going to have slowdown. However, even with these settings, I've noticed there is some slowdown like this when you kill these wolves. I can't remember if that happened in the original PlayStation game on original hardware or not, uh, but from what I can tell, it doesn't happen often in any other situation. You might want to do some more fine tuning with the settings if you want to play Symphony of the Night at 2x resolution, or of course, just set it down to 1x and everything will run great. I did have a request to check out Silent Hill. With the settings I presented at the beginning of the video, I don't seem to be having any issues, Cheryl. although I have never played this game Cheryl? before. I know, but I haven't, so I'm not really sure. However, it does seem to be running well, in my opinion. Where are you going? Hey, wait! Stop! If you're a Silent Hill fan, you be the judge, but everything looks pretty good to me. Round one. Fight. Moving right on to a bit of Tekken 2, because I prefer it over Tekken 3, and it runs great at 2x resolution and 2x MSAA. There are some weird orange boxes there in the background. Not sure exactly why, but there aren't any similar glitches in the next stage. You knew I was going to sneak some Ridge Racer in here. 
This is Ridge Racer Type 4, which I think is the best looking racing game on the original PlayStation. Here you can verify those settings, everything turned on, and despite being one of the most demanding games on the PlayStation, it still runs great. Cobalt 2 has always been a beautiful looking fighting game. You'll notice immediately there are some performance issues. For this game, you will have to turn off MSAA, but you'll notice that immediately takes care of the issue and the actual gameplay also now runs great. I tested it with 2X MSAA and it had the same frame rate issues that we saw on the character selection. Now, dropping into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, I'm not really sure why you played this version over the Dreamcast one if you're playing on a Retroid Pocket 3. And quickly, you should notice, there are performance issues in this game that are original to the PlayStation hardware. But we can fix that. If we come over to Advanced, and we give it just a nice little overclock to 150%, now you'll see that instead of having frame rate problems, it runs at a stable 30 frames per second. It does, however, have some really weird polygon clipping and disappearing issues over at the edges of the screen uh, due to playing it in widescreen. I also had a request to talk about how cheats work in these emulators. Here's how it works in this one. You just choose that option. You have a long list of cheats that have already been entered for you, or if you find a code online, you can add it yourself. Alien Resurrection is another game that looked really great back on the PlayStation. But again, you'll see here, the performance is not so good. And luckily, this game isn't even frame locked at 30 frames per second like Tony Hawk was. So, take a look up there in the corner. You can see it's down in the 20s. If we bump the CPU overclock up to 200, now our frame rate is up closer to 50 frames per second. And if we jump back in, and set it to 300% overclock, things get even better. So now this game that hovered in the upper 20s most of the time on the original PlayStation is running at double resolution and 60 frames per second on the Retroid Pocket 3 using Duck Station.
And finally, if you'll indulge me for a minute, yeah, it's Ridge Racer Revolution, not the most advanced game on the PlayStation. I started at 1x resolution, now we're at 2, but this game will actually play great at 3x resolution, plus it's Ridge Racer, so I had to show it to you. And that does it for yet another settings guide on the Retroid Pocket 3. If you feel I missed or overlooked something, please do let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this look at PlayStation on the Retroid Pocket 3, and I hope it helps you get the most out of your system. I know I, for one, will be going back and playing some PlayStation games. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll see you again soon for the next video, and until then, keep gaming.